Welcome back to Rock the JVM. I'm Daniel, and in this video, I'm going to talk about type lambdas in Scala 3. Now, this video will be a little more difficult and a little bit more abstract, and this assumes that you are a more mature or experienced Scala developer. Ideally, you would have watched the previous video, which discusses types, kinds, and type constructors. It serves as a preparation for this one, and I'm also going to attach the link to that video in the description of this one. Now, type lambdas, which we are going to discuss in this video, are simple to express in Scala 3, but the ramifications are pretty deep. Now, um, I mentioned Scala 3 a bunch of times, so um, I'm going to code Scala 3, and um, this assumes that you have a recent IntelliJ version or a development environment that supports Scala 3. I'm also going to use IntelliJ version 2020.2 and I'm also going to show you how to start a Scala 3 project. Now, as always, I'll recommend that you code with me in this video so that you remember most of what I'm talking about. And whenever you need to refresh your memory about these topics, just re refer back to this video or to the blog, and I'm going to attach the link in the description as well. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Rock the JVM channel because I'm just getting started and I'm going to post lots of content about Scala, Java, Apache Spark, Akka, and so on and so forth. Now, let's get back to the topic at hand, and we are going to discuss type lambdas. All right, so I've switched to my code editor. I've created a small class. I'm going to turn that into an object just in case we need to test anything. Probably we will not, but regardless, I'm going to add a main method just in case, much like we did for other videos. Now, let's quickly recap what we did in the previous video, which ideally you would have watched, about types, kinds, and type constructors. I'm going to sum it up really quickly for you here so that you don't have to spend another 15 minutes to watch that video. So, Scala types belong to kinds. So, kinds are types of types. And all the types in Scala belong to various kinds. And I'm going to describe a couple of kinds. For example, plain types like int, string, and case classes, whatever types and classes you defined, which are non-generic, belong to the value level kind. I call that the level zero kind. That is because you can attach these concrete types to values. Okay, so you can attach two values. So for example, you define you can define a val a number such as int and on the right hand side you can do 42. So you can attach this type to a value. Now there are higher level kinds, for example, list, option, and things of that sort are what I call level one kind. We also know, uh, know these kinds as generics. That is because they take type arguments and uh, I call these level one types because you cannot attach these to a value by themselves. So for example, if you wanted to define a list, you can't say a list is of type list as on its own. So this is a compiler error. You would need to pass a concrete type such as int to turn that into a concrete type. So a level one type takes a type argument which is of type level zero. Okay, so this is the level one kind. And also Scala supports higher kind of types, that is higher level kinds in my terminology. For example, I'm going to define a class called functor, which is present in most pure functional libraries such as cats or Scala Z. And um, functor takes a type argument, for example, I'm going to name this f, which is itself generic. This is why I named this level two. And types like functor, monad, and so on and so forth are what I call level two kind. That is generics of generics. Okay, so generics with a type argument that is itself generic. And if you wanted to attach this type to a value, you would need to pass a level one type. So for example, if I wanted to call to use this functor option, you would need to say new functor with type option. Okay, so notice that we aren't passing option int or option string, but rather the option type itself, which is belongs to the kind at level one. Okay, so this is basically the recap of the previous video. Types in Scala are organized into kinds, and some of these kinds need other type arguments of inferior kind. Okay, 
Cool, so this is basically the recap. Now, generic types such as list or higher kind of generic types like functors need the appropriate type arguments before they can be attached to a value. We can never use list directly to a value, but only list of int or list of string or a concrete type of that sort. You can therefore think of list itself, so the generic type itself, as similar to a function. So list is similar to a function. So um, list will take a type argument t and you will get a concrete type list of t as a result. So this is similar to a function except we are operating at, a, at the type level. So again we talk about the list type itself okay and we call that a type constructor. Okay so you can therefore think of list as a function from types to types. Now, in Scala 2, such a concept uh, was very hard to express. The uh, syntax for that was ugly, to put it very mildly. Now, in Scala 3, we have a special syntax to express this concept in the form of a type lambda. And a type lambda is a type. So I'm going to use a type alias. I'm going to call this my list, for example. And this looks as follows. A type T in between square brackets and a fat arrow with an extra greater than symbol so basically an extra fat arrow here and I'm going to use list T on the right hand side of that sign. Now what have I expressed here? This is a type constructor that turns a type argument T into list of T much like list does by itself. So basically I've defined a type alias to list. So my list is the same as list. Now this particular structure is the more interesting piece of this line and you can read that uh, that structure as a type that takes the type argument t and results in the concrete type list of t. So if you pass a concrete type here you will obtain another concrete type list of that thing. Okay so this does the exact same thing as the list type by itself. Let me give some other examples. I'm going to define a type that I'm going to call, let's say, map with string key as a type lambda that takes a type argument t and results in the concrete type map of string and t. So basically, you can define a value, let's call this address book, having the type map with string key and the value type is string as an empty map, for example. So you can define one argument type aliases that rely on this type lambda structure over here. I'm going to discuss why we need type lambdas shortly because you can safely say type, let's call this map with string key two having the value t, okay, or the uh, type argument t as map of string and t. So this does the exact same thing. However, this concept, although a little bit more cumbersome to write, is actually pretty powerful in very high level code and I'm going to describe what that does shortly. But before that, let's practice this type lambda with some more examples. So I've defined another example here as a type lambda that takes a type argument t and results in a concrete type map where the key is string and the value is t. Let's write some more examples. I'm going to define a type, let's call this my special either, that has two type arguments and I'm going to use t and e and uh, I'm going to use this extra fat arrow. So look at that, this looks very similar to a regular lambda except we're operating at the type level now and I'm going to return an either where the left hand side is an undesirable value e and the right hand side is a desirable value option t for example. So this is a type lambda that takes two type arguments and if you pass two, two concrete types to this special either type, you will obtain an either with the error type e 
and the desirable value option T. And if you wanted to attach that to a value, let's call this special either of type special either of int and string. So this is basically the same as an either of option string and option int. Okay. okay, so when I say something like this, it is functionally the same as an either of string and option int. And on the right hand side, I can pass an instance of this either. So for example, I can say uh, write with sum2. So this structure is very small, very powerful, and pretty hard to wrap your head around. So if this seems a little abstract, that's normal, all right? Um, this is more applicable to the people that write higher level libraries or higher kind of types or use higher kind of types more often, okay? So this kind of type lambdas may look very interesting because now I'm going to discuss why we need type lambdas in the first place. So type lambdas become important as we start to work with higher kind of types. And for this example, I'm going to consider monads, which is one of the most popular higher kind of type classes. And you encounter monads in libraries like cats or Scala Z. And um, in um, its simplest form, a monad looks something like this. So I'm going to define a trait monad with a higher kind of type M. So monad is higher kinded and it takes a type argument which is itself generic and this has a bunch of methods pure which takes a type argument a and a value of type a and returns an ma and a function called flat map which takes two type arguments a and b an initial wrapper of type ma and a transformation which takes a value a and returns an mb and at the end we return an mb but the functions themselves are really not that important the important thing is that monads take a type argument m which is generic in one type so monads are applicable to lists they're applicable to options to try to future and to many types and a very interesting example is either Now, either is also a monadic da data structure. So if you didn't know that uh, newsflash, either is also a monadic type, either uh, has map, flat map, filter, and so on and so forth uh, in the standard library, and you can define a monad for it. Um, perhaps I'm going to write uh, another article and film another video on it. But because either takes two type arguments, this poses a problem because monad takes only one. Okay, so how do we write something like this? We would like to write something like a class, let's call this either monad, which takes a type of argument that I'm going to call E for the error type in either. So if you remember, either is right biased. And so the left hand side of either is the error type, which I'm going to use here as the type argument E. And this would extend monad of either where the left type is E and the right type is something that can be anything at all. So we would like to be able to write something like this so that this either monad can work for all the possible either's for which the left hand type is E. So for example, this would work for either of string and int, either for string and string, either for string and person and all either's at once okay so this either monad could work for all these possible types where the desirable value is yet unknown however sadly this structure is not valid scala code the answer is that we would write something along the lines of the following i'm going to define a class that i'm going to call either monad with the type argument e which extends monad that has the following type the following type needs to be a level one type so this is generic in one type i'm going to use that type t and i'm going to use a type of lambda so i'm going to use a very fat arrow and i'm going to return either of e the left hand side the undesirable value and the type t 
and I'm going to define pure and flat map. And uh, in this case, I'm going to use either of E and A and the transformation from A to either E and B. Apparently the auto completion is need some bug fixes in IntelliJ. But regardless, this is valid skull code. And in this way, this either monad here could work for all either's with the same error type. For example, when the uh, desired type can be int or string or person or whatever concrete type you might want to pass. And this works with all types at once. Now, this might be a little hard to swallow. So if you've written abstract Scala code so far, this might seem like a viable problem that you might want to solve. If you haven't worked with higher kind of types a lot, this might seem really abstract and you might go like, Wah. Why do I need this in my life? I, I don't want this in my life. And the truth is, you don't need this in your life right now. You will need to wait until you will need to abstract your code quite a lot until you need to work with higher kind of types. So this works as if we had a two argument function like either here, and we needed to pass a partial application of it to another function, in our case, the monad. So this is really abstract and really hard to wrap your head around. So I feel you. Now, prior to Skull 3, libraries like cats used to resort to compiler plugins to make such code work. And um, the uh, compiler plugin was called kind projector to achieve something along the lines of the line that I've commented here with the question mark. And cats uh, operates with a star pattern over there. Now in Scala 3, this is expressly permitted in the language itself. So I'm uh, anticipating that libraries like cats will follow suit and will allow these kinds of structures to permeate the entire library code. All right, so I hope this makes sense. So with a very simple and short syntactic structure, Skull 3 solves a problem that API designers had to work around and bent over backwards basically for ages, for years. And that is how to define higher kind of types where some type arguments are left blank, quote unquote. So I hope this was useful. And in a future video, we'll talk more about some of the advanced capabilities of type lenders and also some of the pitfalls that you might fall into if you don't use them correctly. I hope you liked this video. If you did, click the like button for me and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And go ahead and follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn for fresh updates on upcoming material. As always, I'm dying for feedback, so please leave your comments below. I read every single one. And check out the Rock the JVM website. We have tons of content, including on the CATS functional programming library. Until next time, I'm Daniel, signing off. <laughs>